Welcome to my guide for the CGP Set A Math Test 3. As I've said before, these tests are really, really valuable. They're only 10 minutes long. I'm not affiliated with CGP at all, but they're fantastic books. So if you are quarantined or if you are being homeschooled at the moment, then they're definitely worth checking out because they don't take very long and they can help you with your learning. Okay, number one, join the numbers on the left to their value when rounded to one decimal place. If we are rounding to one decimal place, what that means is we're rounding to the nearest tenth. So th that's this column here, just after the decimal point. So if we're going to round these, 16.245, we're going to be looking at this number here to see if it's five or above. If it's five or above, we move this tenth up one. If it's less than five, we just drop it back to what it is uh, with some zeros on the end. Because we haven't got anything greater than 5, 5 or above, we drop that down to 16.2. Likewise with 16.31, we look at the column after the tenths, that's the hundredths, and if it's 5 or above, we push it up. Obviously that one's not, so we drop that down to 16.3. And therefore, the one we've got left should be 15.9, but let's double check. We look at the hundredths, if it's 5 or above, yeah, but it is, this tenths column is going to go up 1 to 9, so it will be 15.9. Number two, Rosa goes karting with friends. The karting track is 500 metres long. If she goes around the track nine times, how many kilometres will she have travelled? Now, that's the important bit. At the moment, we've got it in metres, but they want the answer in kilometres. So that's where most people will fall down. So first of all, if she goes around the track once, it's 500 metres. If she goes around nine times, it needs to be nine times as much. So nine times 500 is 4,500 meters but the answer wants in kilometers so obviously there are a thousand meters in a kilometer so our answer would be 4500 divided by a thousand which is 4.5 kilometers number three write down the two common multiples of three and seven that are less than 50. a uh, common multiple is a multiple that is in three and the seven times table in this case. So the first one, the easiest one we could do is to just times three by seven. So three times seven equals 21. That is a common multiple of three and seven. It's both in the three and the seven times table. So we know that's one of them. Now it says there are only two. So uh, we could keep going in our seven times table and just keep going in our threes and then eventually arrive at a number or in this case, we could just double it because we know that if 21's in it, um, two times as much will also be in it, 42. And that's your answer for this one. If you couldn't do that in your head, like I say, just keep going on the times tables, uh, write out your threes, write out your sevens, and then you should spot one that's in both. But remember, it has to be less than 50. Okay, number four, Rosa is posting a box. It costs three pounds to post a box with a volume greater than 1500 centimeters cubed. Otherwise, it costs two pounds. How much would it cost Rosa to post the box below? So first of all, we need to work out its volume. And in order to do that, we do the base times the height times by the width there, or the depth. Uh, we times those together. So let's do that now. 7 times 12, I know is 84. And then we times 84 by 20. Uh, if we do 84 times 10, it's 840. And double that, 1,680. So that is how many centimetres cubed it is. That's its volume. Now, if it's greater than this number here, it's going to cost £3. So it is greater than that, as you can see. So it is going to cost £3 to post the box. OK, number five is a good test of your knowledge of angles. If you can have a look here, it says work out the size of X and Y. At the moment, we have some angle given to us here, and we've got a few clues to help us find the rest. What you should know is that angles on a straight line always add up to 180 degrees. So this is a straight line angle here. We've got one portion of it, which is 130, and the X value is going to be the remaining bit that adds up to 180. So because we've got 130, the missing gap here should be 50. So X is 50 degrees because 50 and 130 make the full straight angle, which is 180. Now these little straight lines here are a clue to solving the rest of the triangle. These mean that these are exactly the same size, these sides here. So it's an isosceles triangle. It does mention it there, uh, but it's just good confirmation. So that means that this angle here, x, is 50. This angle that we're missing over here is also 50 because it's an isosceles triangle. So we need to work out now what y is. And you should also know that angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So we have 50 
and 50, which make 100. So this remaining angle Y should be 80 degrees, because 80 at 50 at 50 make 180 degrees, which is the angles in a triangle. Okay, number six, fill in the missing number to make this fraction calculation correct. So we want our answer to be 2 fifteenths. And at the moment, we if we were to multiply our fraction, let's just assume that was a 1 in there. 1 times 1 would be 1, so that bit's not correct. 3 times 10, because remember we times the top and the bottom together, 3 times 10 is 30. So we'd end up with 30 at the bottom. So what we need to try and do is get 30 at the bottom that is equivalent to 2 fifteenths. What that means is we need 4 thirtieths, because 4 thirtieths is the same as 2 fifteenths. So if we can find out a way of getting 4 thirtieths, then we're going to get the answer right. Uh, so obviously we don't need to change anything on the bottom. Something times 1 should be 4, uh, so our answer should be 4 thirds. And just check that, 4 times 1 will be 4, 3 times 10 is 30, and if we cancel that down, so divide the top and the bottom by 2, we get 2 fifteenths, so that's exactly the same as that, so our answer is 4 thirds. Number 7, on a map 3 centimetres represents 75 metres in real life. The distance between a hotel and the train station is 11 centimetres on the map. So what's the real life distance from the hotel to the train station? Uh, when you get questions like this it's always good to work out what one unit represents and what does one centimetre represent. We know that 3 is 75 so what we need to do is divide 75 by 3 and that will give us how much one centimetre is worth. Uh, so one centimetre is 75 divided by 3 which is 25. So one centimetre is worth 25 metres. Now we can times our one centimetre by 11, so we can get 11 centimetres worth of metres. So we need to do 25 times by 11, which is 275 metres. And that is the distance from the hotel to the train station. OK, last question. In 2002, Ralph bought a rare video game for £40. This year, he sold the video game for 75% more than he paid for it. How much did he sell it for? This one is quite a simple calculation really. So we take £40 and we times it, because it's going to get bigger, by 75% by 1.75. It's going to be an increase of 75%. So he sold it 75% uh, more than he paid for it. So that's three quarters more than he paid for it. So if we can find out how much one quarter of 40 is, uh, that's 10. 10 pounds would be 25% more. So 75% more is going to be three times as much as that. So he sold it for three lots of 10 more, which is £30. So he sold it for £30 more than he bought it for, which was £40. So £40 plus the £30 that he gained is £70. Another video game that Ralph bought in 2002 for £22 is now only worth 52% of its original value. So what is it worth now, right, what we need to do is work out 1% of the value first. So to find 1% of something, we divide it by 100. So £22 divided by 100 is 22p. So that's what 1% is worth, 22p. Now we could do 22p times by 52, and that would give us the answer. Or you could do 22p times by 10, because that would give you 10% and do it in chunks that way. It really depends on how you want to do it. There's no correct way of doing it as long as you get the right answer. I'm just going to do 52 times 22 because uh, I can do that a bit quicker. So 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 5 is 10, put a 0, 2 times 2 is 4 again, 2 times 5 is 10, add it up, 1144 that's pence, so we need to divide that by 100. Our answer is £11.40. pence. I hope you found that video useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because that's really helpful for me. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.